I would like to thank the Sapphire Consortium for inviting me here. So I'm pleased to be here again uh, in, in Belfast, especially with this nice weather. Um, I'm going to talk very briefly about our digital health strategy uh, in my region, in my healthcare system, and how this is linked to, uh, I call it precision medicine. We can, we can go back again to the terminology, uh, personalized medicine, stratified medicine, or precision medicine, initiatives uh, we have in, um, in my region. Essentially, the, I mean, I, I don't want to start the, deba the debate about the, term the terminology, but uh, essentially this comes from my advisor, I mean my, my boss, the, the Minister of Health in my region, which always says, so all the medical doctors are doing uh, personalized medicine every time. Because every patient is an individual, different patient, you know. What we do now, because of the advantage of the technology and available we have now, it's to provide a more precise treatment, you know, but personalized medicine, uh, all the medical doctors are doing every time. So, um, first, uh, I'm going to uh, put you in context about my region. Then uh, I will talk about uh, uh, our digital transformation and how our healthcare information system is organized. And then uh, finally, I will go through a couple of initiatives. One which is really important is a uh, um, funded project, a 5 million euros funded project in personalized medicine or precision medicine. So uh, this is a typical slide I, I have every time when I, I give a, a speech. So for those who, who don't know where Extremadura is, it's uh, in the southwest of, of uh, Europe, of Spain right to the border with my friends, Portuguese friends. And actually I'm living in, right into the border. And it's very known because this animal, you know, they are very unpeak, you know. He lives, you know, in the wildlife, in the typical landscape in my region, which is the oak forest. And uh, usually eating uh, acorn freely and he is the responsible of these delicatessen, this, the real Spanish ham, so not the one that you can find in Madrid, <laughs> so for sure, <laughs> not the one that. But also my region is very known because of other agriculture-based products and, and cultural Roman and medieval heritage and, and other things. So, but not everything is good there. So here I show you some socioeconomic factors. So we are few people. Uh, relatively, uh, only uh, over a million of people in, in a really huge region, you know, in sites more or less like Switzerland. And we have a really dispersed population. Most of the population live in, in places than less than 50,000 people, you know. And also, we are losing population from, uh, since the 60s, from the 60s, so uh, every time, so every, all the young people is living to Madrid or to Barcelona, you know, they have more uh, opportunities because uh, uh, my region is very rural area, uh, not really industrialized, uh, and, and then we have a problem of aging. So almost one, 20% uh, 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 of, the, of the population is older than 65 years old, and most importantly, 7% of the population uh, are in the age of 80 or, 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 or even more. So that means we have these numbers, 94% of the chronic patients are polymedicated, and I will come back to that. 80% of the primary care appointments are because of chronic diseases, and more, uh, uh, more importantly, uh, more or less half part of the, the admission at the hospitals are in people uh, in the age of 65 and older. So this is an important problem. And I think we are, in Europe, we are facing the same, the same problem about the aging population. So how the, the, my system is organized? So my, my system is a public health care service, a public health care system, uh, depending on the national health care system. So pre pretty much the same as the NHS here in the UK, 
it's, it's copy paste the same model uh, but the, the difference is the, the, the regions have the competence for healthcare so that means they have the budget for the healthcare and they organize the healthcare in the different regions differently with different budget so although we have the national healthcare system you know providing guidelines uh, uh, in trying to avoid inequalities between regions. So in the end, it might be, there, there, there might be some uh, inequalities because the budget is differently organized. Uh, uh, we have 17 different regions, so 17 different healthcare system, public healthcare system. It's completely public, universal, universal uh, coverage because it's funded by taxes no reimbursement model, no insurance companies. Also, we have, a, we have a pri the private sector as well, but they are minor in my region. So in Spain, in general, uh, it's, uh, it's not really, really high. You know, the, the public system is really, really powerful. So my, my system in my region is organized in eight different areas. It involves 14 different hospitals. You see the, they are where uh, they are located uh, in the in the map, and also involves all the communities health uh, centers and, and primary care centers, you know, and uh, also two mental health uh, hospitals. So uh, we we have uh, uh, more than uh, eighteen thousand professionals working on there, and the budget is, as you see here, one point five billion euros a, a year. So I'm more or less. Uh, 600 goes to pharmacy, to treatments, you know. Imagine if you can save some money in pre prescription, so imagine uh, uh, the money you can save. Uh, all the 14 different hospitals, all the uh, more than 100 uh, community health centers and more than 400 primary care centers are connected by the same platform. So everything is in the same platform. Uh, we provide integrated medical record, one single medical record per patient. So regarding you go to one hospital, to another, to one primary care or one health, community health uh, center, you have the same platform. It's a SAP based, based uh, platform developed by IBM uh, uh, 10 years back in a customized contract. So we are the owner of the, of the platform. So and provides uh, completely electronic prescription, so no paper, we don't use any paper, we have a car, as you might have, and the, the GP or the, the health professional in the, in the hospital insert the car into the system and prescribe it. No, it's not prescribing in, in, into the car, but the, I, I will, talk, I will uh, uh, show you later. So it prescribes into the cloud and the cloud communicates to the pharmacy and you can get your treatment in, any, in, in a pharmacy. Uh, this is the structure of the, uh, our clinical history, our electronic uh, health records. Single medical record per patient. It's integrated with the population database and also the, manag uh, the man management system in, in the different departments. But also contains the data of financial, human, human resources and procurements and contracts. That's really, really powerful in order to, you know, to um, do research in processes, not only in clinical processes, also in, the, in other different processes that, that also account into, into the system. You can see there, you know, uh, financial resources, procurements and contracts. This is part for the users, you know, like the interface for the, for the users, emergency, uh, outpatients, uh, consultation, admissions, waiting lists. Uh, this is a purely clinical management area with uh, clinical history, the reports, uh, nursing, vaccines, operation rooms, prescription, and this is part for uh, human resources, invoices, uh, invoicing, uh, uh, time uh, management, and, and so on. So the one functionality of, uh, of the platform is the interface with the user, with the, with the patient itself. Right? We can get any medical appointment by phone for sure, SMS, uh, and, but the web and, and using an app. 
So this, this is the, the, the interface. So we can uh, uh, get uh, our appointment uh, online using the app or, or, or the web and change the appointment, but we can get the, the, appointment, the appointment in primary and a specialized care. Also, the app has some reminders, a calendar, and reminds you you have the appointment at that time, so and some not, uh, additional notifications. So we can have access to our clinical profile, our, all our clinical data, reports, images, lab tests, and other tests, as you can see there. So we just need a digital certificate, you know, and, and you can get access to, to this through the uh, web page or, or through the app. And now we are implementing, we, are, we already implemented the video consultation for, for the GPs, essentially, which is very powerful. So uh, now you can, for, for me, uh, as a user, when I have my, my appointment with the GP, it's really annoying when, for, when you go there and you wait for half an hour. So it's very, it's very, it's very common in, in Spain. I don't know in, uh, here in, in the UK, other countries, you guys, but in Spain it's very common. And actually I'm not living in the same uh, place I'm working, so I have to leave before. So I have to drive 45 minutes to, to go to my, my uh, GP, and if I have to wait half an hour or more, so it's, uh, it's not really convenient. And this is really good, you know, because sometimes you don't need any physical examination, so just to tell the, the GP what is going on. Uh, then also you have access to mm -hmm. the treatments, all the treatments you, you, you have in your profile, and the availability for taking it for taking them to, uh, into the uh, pharmacy. So this is the typical thing. So when the GP inserts the car, the GP or the, or the medical doctor in the hospital prescribes into the car, the car uh, um, connects to, to the platform and the platform communicates with the pharmacy association and this association is, uh, connects to all the pharmacies in the region so in the way you can get your treatment in a, in any pharmacy, so right away. Uh, we have already inter interoperability with other regions in Spain, so we can go to Catalonia and get the, the treatment there. And now we are in a EU-funded project uh, working in interoperability with other countries in Spain. We are in a very uh, huge project uh, in this way. Uh, and for sure, the customer service, taking care of complaints, suggestions, uh, reporting incidents, and, and so on. And some important functionality also there to find the, the closest resource uh, nearby you, like pharmacies or hospitals or primary care. So now I will tell you about two different projects we are running right now. The first one is called Media, Media Project. So uh, basically comes from this picture. So from the, the way we are prescribing every time, or the, the, old, the old times, one size fit all medicines, so or one single treatment for, for everybody, you know, uh, providing adverse reaction, no benefit or some benefit. So we passed uh, to the certified me uh, medicine, so uh, where the, the patients are grouped by uh, subtypes, uh, subtypes, diseases, uh, risk profile, demographic, socioeconomics, uh, clinical features, and some biomarkers, etc. And the project I'm showing you goes directly to the, the translation to the precision medicine. So taking care of uh, genomics, uh, another omics, lifestyles, uh, preferences, the clinical history, medical records, compliance, uh, and other factors. So we can give, as we discussed uh, yesterday as well, we can give the right treatment at the right moment to the right uh, person. 
So basically what we aimed into in this project is to uh, develop a clinical support decision system, you know, based on different data. It's a, actually a PCP project, a pre-commercial uh, procurement project. So I, I don't know if uh, all of you are aware about the public procurement uh, of innovative solutions. So this is a, I mean, you have the pre-commercial procurement in the more early phase, like TRLs, uh, lower TRLs, and the uh, public procurement of innovative solution is more uh, closer to the market. So in this case, we're gonna develop a, a, a prototype uh, that will be essentially, you know, a product will be a software, a clinical decision support system. So this software will predict any adverse uh, drug reaction will recommend uh, the most effective treatments and will identify the most uh, suitable candidates for clinical trials. So how this works? So the, in the, this works in the way that when the, the health professional inserts the car into the system to prescribe, so the system, this clinical decision support system will read into the clinical history to detect any adverse reaction in the past or any, any uh, um, kind, uh, kind of a, uh, incompatibility, incompatibility uh, between uh, or interaction between uh, different treatments, anything that might uh, be wrong for, for the patient that usually the, the professionals are not reading all the reports when, are, when they are uh, prescribing. So this will be, uh, uh, will be performed uh, automatically by the, by the software. Also we'll read the genomic profile. We will sequence, uh, in this project is going to be a pilot project, 3,000 people, uh, all the, the whole genome. I will read the, the genome entirely to find the different biomarkers, the different markers uh, and for, for adverse uh, drug reactions. So detecting those are, are not uh, really um, uh, respond well to the, to the treatment that the professional is given. And also this will be in the healthcare part, but in the, in the part of the, the user uh, also will uh, um, get the inputs for wearable and gadget, you know, uh, that the, the patient have, uh, can have, uh, monitoring the lifestyle and also the food and, and so on. So different inputs in a, you know, in a machine learning uh, and algorithm, algorithm, algorithm uh, environment to provide the right treatment and for sure uh, avoid uh, adver adverse drug reaction because uh, I think uh, one of the fifth uh, prescription the health professionals are, are uh, doing are, are wrong, you know? It's 20% more or less. And I think it's 30% of the uh, admission at the hospitals are because of a uh, uh, wrong prescription. So this is a, a huge problem. So we have in this project, we now started, we are in the uh, open uh, consultation with companies. We already uh, collected all the uh, expression of interest from companies and we are now in the, in the dialogue with the companies in order to develop the different part of the project. The, we will, I mean, the, as a public system, we will launch tenders uh, in different parts you know, and the different parts are this. One will be the personalized drug prescription system, which basically will, will be an e-health platform. So uh, algorithm uh, development and, and so on. <coughs> the molecular laboratory, so will take care of the genetic biomarkers, all the genetic profile how the genetic, the, the, the genome is sequenced and then analyzed in a routine way in order to uh, give the right information uh, and comparison with literature about the different markers uh, for adverse, adverse uh, drug reaction. 
pharmacological and analytical laboratory with all the different inputs that are not the purely uh, genetic uh, inputs, like uh, uh, all the biochemistry or, or, or even the, the, the lifestyles. Analysis in clinical setting and clinical trials units. So all the, uh, these companies will be the, those that are HTA, uh, Health Technology Assessment, uh, to, to uh, assess the, how we implement this into the healthcare system, into the clinical settings. And also tools for clinical evaluation and adverse drug reaction that will be to develop new uh, gadget to monitor uh, the side effects, the po potential side effects in the, in, in the drugs. And we can actually prevent the, 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 the patient, for example, uh, can, have in, can uh, come back again into the hospital. The second uh, project uh, is basically the same. It's, it will be another clinical decision support system. And in this case, will be uh, for a stroke. You know, this is um, uh, also a funded project by uh, the national government, uh, the Ministry of Science. And it's actually a company uh, which is leading the, the project. And basically, we will uh, um, develop, we will build a tool for personalized stroke prediction. We are in the way that we already created a database and we are analyzing the, the data. Uh, we are developing right now the algorithm uh, for prediction. And the next step will be uh, apply this tool into the normal consultation uh, by an app. So the way is uh, the health professional will, will have an app. And, and then uh, we, we will be, uh, have a, a product, a validated product uh, that will be accessible for all the health professionals uh, into the system is, if we succeed. So, and I think that's all. So here you have my, my contact details and I will be glad to take your question now by email, by Skype or whatever you want. Thank you very much.